Hi, my name is Dr. Manuja Premaratni from the University of Ottawa Heart Institute and for today's edition of Fits on the Go blog, I'm joined by Dr. Deepak Bhatt from the Late Breaking Clinical Trial, Simplicity Hypertension 3, and my co-fellow Dr. Saurav Chatterjee from New York. Dr. Bhatt, if I could just ask you the first question, it'll be, for those who couldn't make it, could you please summarize the, the pertinent findings of the trial, please? Sure, so Simplicity Hypertension 3 was a randomized, blinded sham control trial of renal artery denervation for resistant hypertension versus sham control. The primary endpoint of the trial was six month office systolic blood pressure change from baseline to six months for the control arm versus the treatment arm. And the difference between the two arms was about two millimeters of mercury, and that wasn't a significant difference. So. Unlike the prior work, largely non-randomized, uh, we didn't see this large reduction in blood pressure that many had anticipated. As a secondary endpoint, we also examined ambulatory systolic blood pressure and didn't find any significant difference there between the two arms. Once more, about a two millimeter mercury uh, difference and not significant. Right. For, and you know for this is a commonly uh, like a common population that we all see in outpatient clinics. So, for, and for for those of us, uh, could you please tell us where do you think renal denervation therapy will go from here? Sure. So this trial was negative, and I think it was pretty clear as far as the results go. But I wouldn't want to overgeneralize. So there are other patients with resistant hypertension quite different from the sort we studied. We studied patients with resistant hypertension who are on maximal medical therapy in a closely supervised situation that is a clinical trial under expert hypertension care. So that's not necessarily how most patients with resistant hypertension and even out of control or uncontrolled hypertension are treated. So for a patient who, for example, uh, is not adherent to their medicines, who's coming into the emergency room every couple of months with some sort of hypertensive crisis, there might be a role for renal denervation. I'm not saying that there's never any role where it might be considered. And of course, it's investigational in the U.S., so outside of clinical study, it can't be used, but it's approved in over 80 other countries and is used and has been used in thousands of patients. But I would say even to those physicians, you know, be judicious in considering using it, and I wouldn't use it routinely in resistant hypertension, but there might be some exceptional cases such as what I mentioned where it might be considered. Even then, I would personally be cautious about using something that hasn't been validated in a large clinical trial. Sure. And I'll just hand over to my co-fellow. Oh, sure. Thank you, Minuche. Thanks, Dr. Bhatt. Thank yes. you for sharing uh, your time with us. Uh, I had a question about the subgroup among white and black patients, and there was a potential difference between the black and the white subgroups, but didn't quite reach statistical significance. Do you think there can be anything that could be looked into it, or should there be scope for further research? You're right. We did examine a number of pre-specified subgroups. One of them was based on racial ethnic category, that is African Americans and non-African Americans, and really the non-African Americans translated to Caucasians. So there uh, was no apparent benefit at all in the African American patients. However, in the Caucasian patients, there was a nominally statistically significant reduction in the office systolic blood pressure, about seven millimeters of mercury. So still an absolute magnitude, not the double digits that had been uh, predicted previously. But even there is some caution in terms of interpreting the numbers so that statistical significance would disappear with adjustment for multiple comparisons. The interaction term, if you uh, allow me to get a little bit into statistics, was 0.09, which some people would say is a significant interaction term as it's under 0.1. Others would say it is not a significant interaction term as it's above 0.05. And, and statistically speaking, the final point there is if we had used our five millimeter superiority margin as we did for the primary endpoint for the subgroup, then, then none of them, including this one, would have been positive. I'll also mention our a priori hypothesis was actually that African Americans would benefit more. So again, one needs to be particularly cautious interpreting subgroups when it goes against the initial hypothesis. So I, I'm not sure that there's really going to be anything there in the subgroups. On the other hand, I don't think that renal denervation's dead. I think there's still potential in the field, even though we didn't find any benefit in our trial. And I think the leading 
hypothesis right now, and it's only a hypothesis, is maybe something about how we did the procedure wasn't sufficient to actually achieve biological denervation. Maybe we needed to do more ablations or do the ablations in a different way, and, and these sort of technical factors might have accounted for why the procedure wasn't successful in this trial. And fortunately, we have the ability, because we have core lab red angiograms on all these patients, to look at the technique and see, did it matter what the technique was? Did better technique correlate with better blood pressure reductions? If that answer is yes, then I think there's a future even for this catheter in resistant hypertension. If that answer is no, it still doesn't mean that other catheters or other iterations of this catheter might not work for resistant hypertension or for that matter other disease states like heart failure. Thank you so much for sharing that and did you find any differences in geographic locations in terms of the outcomes like has been seen recently with a lot of other trials? So you're right, geographic heterogeneity has been an issue in international clinical trials for years. It's gotten a lot of attention recently, though it's not a particularly new phenomenon. This was a U.S.-specific trial, so in the U.S. renal denervation is investigational, and this was meant to be the so-called pivotal trial for U.S. FDA approval. So the sites were all in the U.S. They were all top-notch interventional centers, experienced interventionalists, experienced hypertension experts. Though I, I should say when I'm saying experienced, I really mean experienced interventionalist, not necessarily experienced in renal denervation, because in fact, almost none of them were, none of us were, because renal denervation is investigational in the U.S., so uh, for almost all of us, it was the first time we performed renal denervation in the procedure. But on the other hand, if the procedure is as simple as everyone had been saying, you know, that shouldn't have been an issue. And indeed, even within the trial, we looked to see if there was a, a learner operating curve, and there wasn't within the range of volume of procedures done. Thank you so much, Dr. Bhatt.